Right people, we have a bunch of new iPhone 15 tidbits, specifically regarding colors, camera updates, connectivity improvements and more, so let's delve into this. So beginning with a quick update regarding the colors, relatively credible source Unknowns21 goes against what 9to5Mac told us and says there's been no evidence of a new red hue for iPhone 15 Pro. Apparently they've heard about a completely different color that's in the works and they do plan to reveal this soon, but honestly guys, I'm not too surprised about this report. As I've said in previous videos regarding color leaks, always take them with a massive grain of salt because they have very much been a hit and miss in the past. For example, leaks were spot on about the 14 Pro's purple, but leaks were completely wrong about the 13 Pro's hero color being a rose gold finish. CS guys, always be skeptical of color leaks. However, it would be nice if the red color 95 Max showed us does pan out because I know many have been waiting for a product red pro iPhone, though of course me being a diehard Sierra Blue fan, I do hope we see another shade like that in the near future. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this, it would be appreciated. Moving on, we have a new rumor that's basically doubling down on something we've already heard about, and that's the 48 megapixel main lens coming down to the regular models. Basically, IT Home says that Sony is getting help from TSMC to build some of the components needed for their sensors because they're feeling the pressure from customers like Apple. Since in case you want to wear, Sony does produce most of the sensors Apple uses on the iPhone. But anyways, these 48 megapixel sensors are allegedly harder to produce because it's got a triple layer structure that's much more complex. And so with the demand for these sensors substantially increasing because Apple now plans to use this with the regular models as well, Sony's kind of panicking. In fact, we did hear about potential delays with the regular models because of the new main lens. And this seems to corroborate with that, but hopefully Apple and their suppliers can still give us the 48 megapixel sensor on the regular models because with the 14s, they just did not offer enough and held back too many features and so hopefully they fix things with this year's regular models. And yes, I know it's in Apple's best interest to push consumers towards the pros, and their plan has worked with the average selling price increasing, but of course, with strong competition around the $700 price point, they should really give us more exciting regular models. So ultimately, I'm looking forward to these phones getting the much larger main sensor because the great thing about it being 48 megapixels is that it should give us much better zoom options. Remember Apple gave us back the 2x option on the Pros by cropping into this massive main sensor so that of course could now come to the regular models which is awesome news because they don't have a telephoto lens and so this basically gives us optical quality zoom on the base models. And also remember Jeff Poo did suggest the 48 megapixel main sensor on iPhone 15 will be slightly upgraded and now lets in more light. So there is a possibility that along with this, Apple further improves their computational magic and gives us 5x zoom that's optical quality on the base models. That would be pretty neat. And remember the Pro Max this year is getting the periscope lens anyways, so they can afford to give the regular models significant zoom upgrades without them cannibalizing the Pros. Also want to mention, I'm hoping we finally get an upgraded ultra wide on the base models because right now I believe the iPhone 14 still uses the same sensor from iPhone 11, which is not that terrific for today's standards, especially since it lacks macro and focus. So I'm really hoping this year's regular models get the upgrade to the newer ultra wide lens. And that would be the ideal amount of camera changes for those who plan to buy the regular models. Now moving on to the ultra wide band chip in iPhones, this was introduced with the iPhone 11 and since then, there really has not been that many changes. But now we have a rumor from credible source Minchiko that we could see a U2 chip this year with the 15 series that works better with the headset. Apparently Apple's plan is to further integrate the headset into the ecosystem and so we can expect upgrades to Wi-Fi and the ultra wide band chip on future iPhone models with the 15 getting the U2 chip and the 16 jumping to Wi-Fi 7. Now this is actually quite surprising because we don't even have Wi-Fi 6C yet. That's a standard Apple's been slow to adopt, but I'm glad Apple is finally catching up in this department. Anyways, coming back to U2, the chip, not the band, this will now be seven nanometers and this should significantly upgrade the performance and the efficiency. Now, how is this 
going to benefit the headset you may ask? Well currently the U1 handles location based features like find my precision finding and airdrop so maybe with the new SSC inside it's going to be easier to transfer large files over airdrop from iPhone 15 to the headset. Now coming to Wi-Fi 7 this allegedly is going to provide speeds of at least 30 gigabits per second and could even hit 40 gigabits per second which is pretty insane. This should also be able to use 320 megahertz channels and supports 4K quadrature amplitude modulation technology. I'm not pretending like I know what that means. That just sounds like gibberish, but anyways. Basically, this should give you more than twice the speeds you got with Wi-Fi 6 with the same number of antennas. This I can definitely see being useful for offloading heavier functions you might do on the headset. And considering we have heard about a cheaper headset already in the works, I would not be surprised if that's less of a standalone product and relies more heavily on the iPhone you already have in your pocket instead. I think a big advantage of Apple doing this is that number one, it should be less bulkier and lighter, but also number two, this is going to be cheaper for us because Apple no longer needs a Mac chip in the headset. It can rely on the iPhone's horsepower instead. So Wi-Fi 7 will definitely play a big part in achieving this. Now moving on to a pretty sus Weibo leak that should be taken with a massive grain of salt. They tell us initial batches of iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max are going to use A17 chips based on the N3B process. But early next year they could switch the A17 to the cheaper N3E process and that's apparently also less efficient. And guys I know that Apple loves saving some cash but I very much doubt this is going to be the case. If there was no difference in the efficiency of the SoC, then of course, I could see this happening, but the post does specifically mention it's going to be worse efficiency-wise, and so I don't see how Apple is going to get away with this, and it would be unfair to those who don't buy the 15 at launch, which is a majority of consumers. However, I will say I don't think the post is completely false, there is a chance something's being lost in translation and so I'm going to theorize that Apple's real plan for the A17 chips is to move these to the new cost-cutting N3 process when they put these chips in iPhone 16. That could potentially make sense because Apple could easily get away using worse A17 chips because these are the regular models and it would still be an upgrade over the A16 SoC in the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus. Also, if I were to guess, the regular models likely have tighter margins, and so giving them inferior A17 chips that's going to save Apple cash would certainly make sense. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, and thank you for watching.